The new High Limit Sprint Car Series from Kyle Larson, Brad Sweet, and Flow Racing has already debuted this season. They ran earlier this summer at Lincoln Park Speedway. They tried to run a second show at the uh, Wayne County Speedway. It got rained out. They're going to go all out for 2023, 12 races, midweek shows, 20,000 win, 50,000 win. Uh, they've got a points fund. They're going to try to fit these 12 races into the existing sprint car calendar for next year. So that means the all-star calendar. That means the world of outlaws. That means all of the big shows. Uh, and I've had a lot of questions about this series. You know, if you, if you watch Dirt Tracker Daily on a regular basis, you've seen me talk about this stuff. You know, the midweek show issue, you know, where this fits with purse money, you know, and, and whether or not the World of Outlaws are going to let their full-time drivers go run this thing. There's obviously still a ton of questions. There's going to be some big ramifications in the future of the sport around kind of how things get dealt with here over the next couple of months. To try to get some clarity, we've got Brad Sweet on this episode of Dirt Tracker Conversations to talk all things high limit. And to Brad's credit, he came out and wanted to talk to me about this stuff. I didn't even approach Brad to do this. So, you know, the credit goes to him on that. And I had some tough questions I wanted to ask him. I have mixed feelings about this myself. And I put together a list of questions and Brad answered every single one of them. He did not shy away from, from my list of questions in any way. So... Uh, about 40, 45 minutes here with Brad talking all things high limit. Uh, definitely give it a watch. Let me know what you think. Uh, curious where you uh, stand after all of this uh, and, and what you hear from Brad. But uh, enjoy this Dirt Tracker conversation with Brad Sweet. Brad, you're a guy that I've interviewed a few different times when I was at World Racing Group doing Open Red. We had you on a couple of times and and uh, have a ton of respect for for what you do. Obviously, you've had an incredible career up to this point. Um, but I, I'm not so much interested in talking about racing right now as, as much as I am interested in talking about kind of your business exploits. And, and obviously the high limit series is something I've talked about a ton on my daily shows. Um, and I want to talk to you about this. I know you want to talk to me about it as well, but let's just kick things off with, you know, kind of this, the backstory of high limit. Like, how does this get started? You know, do you and Kyle, you know, come to this on your own and go to flow? Do they come to you? Like, give me kind of like, oh, open the curtain here on, on how this deal comes together. Yeah, good question. Um, you know, to start of 2022, I definitely didn't have, uh, you know, any idea or desire to, you know, start a series or anything like that. Um, you know, I have a couple other business ventures, a t-shirt company, uh, you know, with Casey that we do called Kane's Cream Print. Uh, you know, me and my wife and Kyle and Colby uh, Copeland took over uh, Silver Dollar Speedway. So have the racetrack interest. And then, um, you know, around April or so, uh, you know, a lot of talk was going on about, you know, the difference between sprint cars and, and the late model scene and, you know, earnings and winnings and, and the amount of big races the late models were having, um, you know, and, and I understand uh, fully you know, the, the world of outlaws business model, uh, I've lived in it for the last 10 years and, uh, I love the world of outlaws. So, you know, I didn't think much about it, uh, to be honest, but, you know, some of the numbers and figures and, you know, it was, it was a little bit, you know, you could see that things were, were different, you know, on the other side, which is, you know, the late model side. And we don't feel like sprint cars are, you know, way smaller than late models, uh, fan base wise, you know, there's probably more late models in the country, but, you know, earnings wise, we feel like we should be, you know, on a similar playing field. Uh, Kyle, you know, has the relationship with flow racing. Um, you know, I think they did a race together, uh, you know, promoted a race together where Kyle was kind of the headline uh, bulls gap. And I think that's kind of what got the conversation started on their side, as far as, uh, you know, is there an opportunity to, you know, get into the sprint car market with some of this midweek stuff that that the late models are kind of doing with you know late model night in america you know um you know kind of stay in your lane but you know put on something that's pretty compelling during the middle of the week you know acknowledge there's a pay-per-view audience and you know let's put it into the purse and, and try to try to do something so honestly when kyle first approached me i didn't think much about it um uh, i didn't really feel like i had a spot you know in there but you know, after a few conversations and, you know, just looking at everything with him and talking it through, uh, you know, he likes my business sense and, and my knowledge of the sport. Uh, you know, he really just likes to drive, um, you know, and he's obviously amazing at it. And, uh, you know, we have a good relationship, you know, kind of talking about all the different business ventures we have going on. And, 
um, you know, so the opportunity kind of presented itself to me to be a partner with Kyle to create a midweek series, obviously with Flo's involvement, uh, you know, it, that was kind of just the, the brainchild of it, where it started. So then, then it was like, okay, how do we do this without affecting the world of outlaws? We both love the world of outlaws. Kyle, you know, has still has a dream to be a world of outlaw champion. I've built my complete career brand, you know, with the world of outlaws. So, you know, very gingerly, obviously looking at how many events do we think we can do it? How, how much do the events need to pay to be super compelling? Um, you know, and, and where do we fit in? You know, so we kind of looked at everything and that's where we thought 12 was a good number, a good place to be. We thought, you know, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and, you know, we feel like uh, we can fit into that, the ecosystem without hurting anything, um, you know, at that, at that number. And so that's kind of where, uh, the high limits started and, and that's where it's at right now. Uh, where are we at on schedule for 2023? Is everything locked up, ready to go? And we're just waiting on an announcement. Or are you still putting stuff together? Yeah, still putting stuff together. I have a lot of interest from racetracks. Um, you know, I, I think there's, you know, politics involved in everything and I don't want to hurt, you know, the goal is never to hurt a promoter, you know, or, you know, make them pick or choose between high limits or world of outlaws or anything like that. And, you know, I think what we're trying to do is, is let everybody make sure that, uh, you know, they get their ducks in a row and then, you know, we'll try to fit in where we fit in, uh, so to speak. And I don't really, I'm not trying to, we don't want to take anything that's already out there for sprint car racers. If there's already big midweek pain races or racetracks that already have big pain races, we're not trying to go to those places and, and like replace them with a high limit brand. You know, we're trying to create new branded races that are high limit races that are at different places that are in the middle of the week so that guys have an opportunity to make more money, you know, more than they did before. Not, not just trying to take, you know, say the all-star race at Lernerville or, you know, a midweek race somewhere else, you know, we kind of look at it as, look, we're just going to, we're going to fit in where we fit in. We want everyone to keep being as successful as they've been up to this point. And we just want to add to that. Is this a situation where, you know, I know that you have talked about obviously running some of these races. Do you want to run the entire schedule? Are you trying to just run a few races? Like where are you at personally when it comes to racing with high limit? Yeah. I mean, I would love to race every high limit race. Um, you know, that's my goal next year is to, to be, you know, a world of outlaw champion and, uh, you know, race 12 more times for, you know, the extra money. But, you know, once again, there's still, uh, a little bit of, you know, uh, things that would need to happen for that to be possible. Um, you know, I have a lot of different interests right now. Obviously I drive for a race team, Casey Kane racing, uh, of Napa auto parts as my sponsor, uh, you know, world of outlaw champion, you know, world of outlaw brand, and then, you know, creating the series with Kyle, uh, you know, the high limit series. So, you know, no matter what, I'll be at every high limit race. Um, you know, the goal is to, to work out, you know, a situation where, you know, we can, you know, go to both. Uh, obviously we can race every world about our race, you know, no matter what, but, you know, I definitely have to be aware of, you know, every move that we make, you know, financially, what it does, you know, how does it impact the race team? How does it impact high limits? How does, you know, that affect our sponsors and, and so forth. You know, we, we definitely want to, you know, reach a resolution that works for every one of my partners. And, and hopefully I think we can do that. Where is Casey at in all of this? Casey's been super supportive. Um, you know, I went to him very early on and, you know, had the same conversation that, you know, I kind of ran through my head, you know, the scenarios and, you know, obviously we, we, we knew that uh, world racing group wasn't probably going to be, you know, super pumped, but we also know that, you know, the race teams, um, you know, the owners are the ones that put a lot of money into it and haven't necessarily, it hasn't necessarily turned into a super sustainable business model. So, you know, trying to add things that, you know, we're going to help potentially make the teams a little bit more money, uh, especially, you know, in between, you know, it, it was one thing when we were, you know, going to races that paid 6,000 to win during the middle of the week, that doesn't move the needle. Um, but $80,000 purses, you know, or $140,000 purses in the middle of the week, you know, 23,000 or 50,000 to win races, you know, those are impactful for race teams and drivers, you know, especially on nights that they weren't going to 
make anything, you know, and that's impactful for promoters that weren't going to necessarily be able to have a big show, you know, in the middle of the week. So, you know, I think once we kind of had the conversation, you know, Casey as an owner who's lost millions of dollars being a car owner, you know, world of outlaw car owner, because just because of his sheer passion and, and love for the sport, you know, once we had that conversation, I think we all agreed, like, this isn't so bad. You know, I, th- I do think that it can fit without hurting anything. And, uh, you know, and so he's, he's been, you know, supportive and, and we talk, uh, you know, through it all. And, and we're both very hopeful that, you know, we can, you know, find a, a good common ground for the, for everybody. What have conversations been like with world racing group? You know, did, did they know ahead of time you were announcing this, you know, obviously we're, you know, a few weeks, several months down the road here, since you guys came out with the news that this was happening and have things progressed, like, do you feel good about where this is going? Um, you know, I mean, I remember bringing it up to Brian Carter and at Bristol, um, and I'm not throwing Brian under the bus at all, because at this point it was just something that I'd even heard about, you know, just through the great find that Kyle and Flo were, you know, potentially looking at starting a series and, you know, it was supposed to be big pain midweek races. And I kind of brought it to his attention. Like, you know, what do you think about that? Would that be something that, and, and he didn't really, you know, like obviously want to talk about it or, uh, wasn't you know, it was just still an idea at the time. So it didn't, it didn't get serious. Uh, obviously when, when we, you know, we tried to let Brian know probably, you know, a few, a few days or a week in advance, uh, before we were going to announce it, we didn't want to let him know too early. Um, you know, just because we didn't want to get into a battle, obviously his business is the world of outlaws and, and our business is trying to create something that, you know, could be viewed as, um, you know, a potential, competitor uh we don't view it that way just because we're making sure that we don't compete with him um but you know we we try to let him know he's he's kind of you know been a little bit of a challenge to get a hold of um you know at times and uh so we kind of missed maybe missed the boat a little on that one uh, you know so let carlton know um basically um you know the day or two before uh, and then he, and then obviously at eldora brian was you know um we had a conversation and that's really about it at this point. I know there's, you know, other things, you know, and that he's going to have to deal with, with his team owners and, you know, as a business owner that he's going to have to figure out, you know, how it's going to work for his business, whether he lets teams race or not, is going to be completely up to, to him and what's going to be best for his business. And obviously I can't really speak on that. I'm pretty much focused on building, you know, the high limit brand and, the 12 race series and, and put our schedule together and trying to create something that's super compelling and new, fresh, exciting, you know, for the fan base. And, you know, I have a lot of ideas. I, you know, I've invested my whole life. I think I deserve to, you know, have my shot at this. Do you have any sense of like a timeline of when you could have a decision from world racing group about what that looks like for next year? I don't, you know, um, I wish I did. I wish, you know, that, that it would have went maybe a little different, but I mean, I understand too. I mean, this is a big boy world that we live in and, you know, it's, uh, these are big boy decisions, but, you know, I can say wholeheartedly that it's nothing personal it's strictly business on my end. I'm looking out for my family and, you know, trying to create things that are going to work for me and my family for after, you know, when I'm done racing the car and, you know, Kyle's likeness and, and his relationships, him bringing me in, you know, it's just an opportunity that I couldn't pass up. And, you know, I love promoting, uh, obviously I, you know, I've dabbled in it for a while now. Uh, you know, I, I took over Chico because, you know, I want to get back to California scene. I wanted to help 410 racing out there. I want to build the biggest world of outlaw event on the West coast, you know, and, and I don't look at this any different, you know, I want to, I still want to help 410 racing. I want to help race car drivers like myself, you know, at the end of the year, instead of it, the earnings being three or 400,000, I would love that to be seven, eight, 900,000, a million dollars, you know, in the next five years, you know, I want this, this thing to grow. So, you know, I think, you know, keeping a little competition or a little pressure on the situation, you know, it's, just, it's only going to help things go up. And, you know, that was my goal is, is I want to, you know, just stay focused on the high limit tour and I want to pay big money. And I want, I know Kyle does too. And I know Kyle wants, sprint car drivers to, to make a million bucks in a year. That's a goal that he mentioned to me at the beginning that really resonated with me is, 
you know, I know that these earnings look good sometimes, three, 400,000, but you split that with the owner and then you do all your travel expenses over the 90, 90 races, the airplane flights, the rental cars, the hotel rooms, you know, I mean, I'm not complaining. I get to make a living racing a race car. I'm, I'm super happy and proud of that, but it's not maybe as glorious as what, what some would think. And we do risk our lives and we are away from our families and make a, a lot of sacrifice to do it. So, you know, I feel like if we're going to do that, we need, you know, we need this thing to keep growing and progressing and, and there's an opportunity for us to do that. Uh, I think that's surely where this is coming from. It's just, let's, you know, let's just try to make the sport bigger. Let's make it better. Let's, let's make these drivers more money, these teams more sustainable, you know, that's the goal. Do you, like, I, I would imagine that the ask right now, World Racing Group, is that you get to run the full thing. If they come to you and say, we'll let you do six, eight, you know, six races, eight races, is there a middle ground that can be found? Or do you feel like it's all or nothing? I can't speak on every race team. You know, I think every team's looking at it differently. Um, you know, I, I just know that the World of Outlaws was built on the best names chasing the biggest races in the country, you know, and I don't make money unless I'm driving the race car. That's how I make my money. And it's going to be, it would be really hard for me to drive past a bunch of 23,000 win races, you know, especially on off days that, and, you know, even some 50,000 win races It'd be really hard for me to, to be okay with that. You know, I'm for one competition wise and for two, you know, it's just more money in our pockets, you know, as race car drivers. So, you know, I think that's the challenge for, for world racing group is, the common ground with their race teams you know it's the the teams need they need to be more sustainable you know i know world racing group does a lot no one's saying that and i know that world racing group should be profitable they're the ones that have stuck their neck out there and built this thing up and built dirt vision and and it's been great for the sport you know i think some things that happened over the la this last year especially is just the inflationary things with the race teams with fuel costs and hotel costs you know, the bonus money is nice and the tow money is nice, but I just think it's just not keeping up. And, and I think everybody's to the point where, you know, if there's a chance to get this thing a little more sustainable or a little easier to, to swallow, you know, or to, to get it done. Uh, I think, you know, the race teams want that. I think they, they do want, uh, you know, maybe some more money on the table, more purse money, more, whatever they want. I think that's between him and the race teams to figure out. Um, the idea of midweek shows, I know you, you talked about 6,000 win races. Obviously you guys are, are working on midweek shows. And I know several years ago, you guys were not happy with there being so many midweek shows on the schedule and, and world racing group has worked towards there being less of that. But at this point with what you guys are doing, is this just simply about like 22,000 win versus 6,000 win with the midweek stuff? Yeah. I mean, I think there's an opportunity with the way pay-per-view is to incorporate pay-per-view money into a midweek race. And I think that's the point is what, you know, how many people are watching these races? You know, uh, obviously we can see the crowds each night, but you know, when you roll into a track, a midweek person, 6,000 to win against outlaw competition, you know, a long way from home. Uh, it's, it's a lot different. I think you can roll into a, a high limit race, whether you want to or not, you're not forced to for one. And it is 23,000 when it's $10,000 per second, it's $1,500 just to start the A main. Uh, you know, these are bigger paying races that you get to choose whether or not you go, you want to go to or not. And I think that's the point is not every outlaw is going to want to go to all 12 potentially, but they can, or they can't, it's up to them. You know, where the 6,000 win races, you, you had to go and you had to go race for 6,000 bucks. And if you wanted to go home during the middle of the week, you didn't have that ch chance or, you know, even if you won the race, you know, you got 3000 bucks as a driver, you know, it's just not complaining, but it wasn't working for the race teams, probably more than the drivers, to be honest, you know, it just, the smaller purses with the amount of travel and everything that goes into all this. And then, you know, the being away from home, the freedom part, you know, I think that was where the complaint was coming from. It's just like, it wasn't worth your while for the race team. And, um, you know, I, I don't expect every outlaw team to want to run every all 12 races. I think that's the exciting part for me is high limits. Isn't necessarily about the outlaws. It's about whoever wants to run, you know, these midweek races for big money. I think you've seen our, 
the difference between a high limit race and, and an outlaw race or an all-star race is you honestly don't know who's going to be there. It's kind of exciting. You know, it's, it's different. And that's what we want. We want it to be a fun, exciting, we want people to tune in and, and be excited to watch a high limit race. And we want to acknowledge there's a pay-per-view audience out there. We want to acknowledge that you know, the racers are getting paid by it. And, you know, our shows aren't going to have a bunch of support classes. We're going to run our shows fast. You know, we're going to, we're going to acknowledge it. We want everyone from California to Pennsylvania to, to be, to give them some content on a Tuesday or Wednesday night at a, a short track somewhere in the middle of America. That's exciting, you know? So that's, that's what I'm excited about. What, uh, as you kind of worked through all this, and I would imagine you've had a ton of conversations with team owners and other drivers, what is like, what is your sense of, of, you know, how other teams, other drivers feel about this? Like, do you feel like you're going to get a lot of support at these shows next year from, from outlaw drivers and other people, you know, what, what is your sense of, of what the other teams think about this? I mean, I just, yeah, I, I think I haven't heard anything negative. You know, I, I, there's some questions that we've had to answer and, and work through, but, you know, I think the fact that we really aren't trying to mess with anything that's already out there. Um, you know, I think people like that. I think they like the, the, the they, they get to choose whether they're going to go do these races or not um they're not forced and i think you know from local guys in knoxville to local guys in pennsylvania to uh, all-star guys to outlaw guys i mean you know they just like the opportunity in the middle of the week to race for for big purses and so no negativity car owners you know are obviously happy about it because you know, putting your team in a hotel for five days, and not having a chance at a payday is not, not good business. You know, it's not, it's not good for business. And so, you know, I think that's exciting uh, for them. And obviously me as a race car driver, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to, you know, have the potential to maybe go somewhere, race for big money, not think about points, not think about, you know, Hey, maybe we can go try a different setup that we've been thinking about, um, you know, a little less stress. And, and if the race team just needs a night off, you could also drive right by the race and turn it on and, and watch it later, you know? So, um, you know, I think race teams, drivers, the industry, uh, you know, has been very supportive and uh, within, you know, the world of outlaw family, the, as far as teams and drivers, very supportive, um, you know, and, and everybody else, obviously your Ricos and Brian Browns and Geo Celsies and, Anthony Macri's, Brent Marks, all across the country, you know, Swindell Speed Lab team, very supportive, um, you know, very excited about, you know, the opportunity to, to race for more money. Do you, I, I feel like one of the criticisms that I have been seeing, I have had people in the industry like message me this, I've seen this in my YouTube comments, is that these shows are going to become World of Outlaw shows. Like you guys are going to come in, you're going to dominate these races. And I think one of the things that was super compelling about the Lincoln Park race was that you guys weren't there. So what is your response to that criticism, uh, you know, if you guys are allowed, you know, in the future to run these races? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I honestly don't disagree that I don't want them to be world of outlaw races. And I don't think that they will be world of outlaw races. I don't think every, every world of outlaw team is going to want to run an extra 12 races. I really don't, even if they are allowed to, or have the opportunity to, I think you're going to, you're not going to know. I think it's going to look a lot like uh, what happens at Oskaloosa before the nationals or, you know, some other midweek races where, you know, maybe the, maybe the outlaws are allowed to run. Not every team goes, you know, so you tune in and you'll see, you know, Kyle Larson and, and maybe a Brad Sweet and then a Rico Abreu and then a Buddy Kofoid and, you know, maybe a Brent Marks and a, a Geo Selzy and then, you know, maybe some someone else that you weren't expecting to be there. So I think I think that's how the High Limit Series will be. I think you I don't think it'll be uh, this group that goes to all 12. I don't think it'll be the same ever. I think it'll look different, you know, as it moves around the country. And I think, you know, that's what will be exciting about it is it'll be compelling enough that, you're going to have a lot of different, you know, cars. And I think we'll, we'll have big car counts because we're paying good and we're in the middle of the week. We're not competing with anything. So, you know, I think that'll be exciting, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't want it to be the world of outlaws. That's not the goal. You know, um, it's certainly not to make it look like world of outlaws 2.0, um, you know, and I think that's where world racing groups, they got to figure out how to do it on their side that has not, that's nothing to do with, you know, high limits. Obviously if they're allowed to race, we're never going to turn any, anyone away. Um, you know, you're anyone that's, that wants to come, you know, 
battle it out for for 23,000 win against Kyle Larson, uh, myself, you know, the other guys that are going to commit to the series and, you know, bring it all on. I think it'll be great battles. I think, you know, the tracks that we're going to go to are going to be all super exciting. And like I said, there's going to be nothing else on. Uh, I'm wondering about like the number of races that you think is like the right amount of races. And obviously to some extent, the, you know, the circumstances are going to be different for everybody. Everybody's going to have a little bit different idea, but like, just for example, like Brent Marks has run 78 races this year on the late model side, Jonathan Davenport's run 72. Like, do you have an idea in your head about like, what's a good number of races to run in a season? Well, I think, you know, as the world's changing and as inflation's happening and costs are happening, I think uh, that we, we certainly need to look at, you know, how to make this, you know, a little more sustainable for race teams. So I think there's definitely a balance of, you know, too many races, too much travel to get to that number, um, you know, and then less travel to get to, a, a you know, a more comfortable number so that you're, you're actually your bottom line like, might look better at, you know, around, I would say probably around 70, you know, very strong, compelling races is probably the, around the right number. I think, you know, more could get a little diluted in certain areas because there's only so many racetracks and, and so many fans with, with so much disposable income that, uh, you know, but I've, you know, back in the day, they used to run 120, um, you know, and then we went all the way down to 60, you know, and I, I think, uh, everybody has a different opinion on that though. So I think, you know, adding the midweek stuff where it's higher, you know, the higher paying midweek races, you know, a guy might be okay with, with doing a little bit more because he's going from point A to point B, but in the middle, he's able to pick up a, a race for, you know, an extra decent purse, you know, and that, so that might, you might be okay at doing 80 races at that point, but, you know, I think there's some races out there that, don't do anything for anybody. You know, they, the racers don't necessarily want to travel to that place. And I don't think the promoter makes a lot of money. And I think sometimes we do that just to, you know, fill the void basically. And, you know, I think hopefully we can get away from that. Um, one of the concerns I have about this and, and something that, you know, I, I know you guys have talked about with, with high limit is, you know, you guys have said, okay, on the late model side of things, these guys have freedom to go run where they want and, and I almost think, uh, you know, that might, not, might not necessarily be a good thing. I feel like we've seen a little bit of dilution on the late model side with, you know, uh, and I said this the other day on my daily show, or, you know, I feel like if you turn off, you know, any sort of branding on, on the screen and you, and you can't hear the announcer, like in a lot of cases, it's tough to tell what's a Lucas show, what's an outlaw show, what's an XR show, what's a flow show. And I'm concerned that, you know, if, if we let guys just go completely crazy, run wherever they want all the time, that we'll have that. Do you... Do you have feelings about this? Do you have thoughts about this? Have you guys talked about this? Like, you know, where, where do you guys kind of sit in all of this? And, and, and understand, like, I know from, from your perspective, and I, and I understand that you guys are trying to make more money. And, you know, on some level, it's been great for the late model teams. I mean, obviously, Jonathan Davenport has, you know, made a ton of money this year. And I know that's what you guys want to do as well. But have you had conversations about what's happened on the late model side and, and how that could affect sprint car racing? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, there's multiple ways to look at it. You know, I'm trying to be politically correct with my answer but um you know i mean obviously the race teams probably enjoy the freedoms you know uh you know going home and going and seeing your family sometimes is worth a little bit of, you know a little bit of money <laughs> you know i don't think people you know put that into the equation sometimes and you know when you say you know who's it not going to be good for if, if there's freedom for race teams you know in my opinion it's not necessarily great for a world racing group but we don't own world racing group. We don't own dirt vision. So yeah, it's maybe not great for them, but like we own our race teams and we own our businesses. So, you know, I think everybody's got to look for their own, look out for their own businesses. And yeah, I don't want sprint car racing to turn into late model racing. I love the world of outlaw brand. And I think that there's, you know, an opportunity to work together personally to, to make this all work where, you know, I think, there's a chance of a certain number of an event, you know, I think it has to be capped. I, I don't think you want the wild, wild west, like the late models has turned into. So I'll just say that, um, you know, and, and hopefully, um, you know, it works out. Uh, we know that World Racing Group, especially the last couple of years, you know, we've got standard 10,001 purses everywhere now. You know, you mentioned the bonus program earlier, points money is up. 
you know, is, is there more that needs to be done? You know, you th you know, do you think for World Racing Group to continue to make sure that the teams are 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 successful like they need to do? And, and I feel like we're seeing this right now in NASCAR. You know, they're getting ready to come up on this, you know, the new media rights deal, and and you know, the RTA is is trying to figure out what is fair for the teams. Like, do you feel like that's similar? You know, those th there are similar issues for World of Outlaws teams that you know that there needs to be more discussions about the pieces of the pie. Do you, do you think they've done enough? Do you think they need to do more? Like, where do you see that? Well, I think the biggest thing is is lack of transparency. And I understand that World Race Racing Groups, it's their business, so they don't necessarily have to show, you know, what the pay per view is doing. But when you don't share that information with the teams, and then the rumors start to swirl about you know, how many subscribers there are and how much revenue is really coming in. I think that's where you're going to get teams, you know, that get up in arms. And, you know, I, I don't think when the race teams are losing money and the series is making money, you know, and there's no one knows how much the series is making, but I think when there's that lack of communication, then I think you're, then he, the world racing group is going to constantly be battling the race teams wanting more and wanting more and wanting more. Now, I don't know if he's done enough because you can't, you don't know what the bottom line looks like. And I think that's where this is all coming from as far as, you know, the teams, you know, they want to be more sustainable. I mean, there's not seven, eight hundred thousand dollars sponsorships out there to keep these teams going. And so the bonus money program is great. The, the tone money to me is falling behind, uh, the purse money, I mean, that's the, that's the old business model of 3,000 people in the stands, you know, racing for 10,000 to win, you know, and then the sanction fees in there for the promoters. So I don't think, you know, the promoter can afford a bigger purse, the, but where's the pay-per-view money, you know? So it's in the bonus program. That's nice, but that's going to spread over 12 to 14 teams over the course of nine months. You know, it wasn't as in, in, impactful as what we would have probably thought or hoped for. Plus from a, every race team does it different you know tow money goes to the team which it should i mean the team owner is spending the money the bonus money may be split between the team and the driver or the team may keep it or the driver may get it you know so that that's even spread out more and really if you don't run top two or three in points you know uh it's a good check at the end of the year but you know by the time you're ordering parts and paying your guys to the winner you know that money's money's gone so i think you know the 10,000 the win shows I me mean, maybe need to be a little more you know the start money might need to be a little bit more I mean where's the pay-per-view money audience where's that where you know and that's the other part we just don't know you know there there's just it's an unknown amount of revenue whether he's doing everything he possibly can or they're not doing everything we don't know and that's I, that's going to always be a constant battle and I don't have the answer for that because that's not my business, you know? Um, so, you know, I hope it all works out. That's all I can say. Um, as you guys get ready to do this and, and, you know, the, the streaming is obviously going to be a key part of this, but you know, your attendance is going to be important for these shows as well. And, and I'm wondering what you, you know, have you gotten, you know, feedback, have, have you, you know, you, you talked to Rigsby or whatever about stuff that's happened on the late model side, you know, do you have your own ideas based on things you've done in the past at Placerville or, you know, now at Chico about how to make sure that these races are well attended on a Tuesday or a Wednesday night? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be a challenge, you know, um, obviously we got to build the high limit brand so people understand what it is. Um, you know, obviously marketing and advertising is huge. Um, you know, we, we have Kyle, but Kyle races a lot and people are, are used to seeing Kyle. So that's not necessarily, you know, a for sure thing. We're going to get a big crowd, but, you know, I think we, ha we just want to, you know, start putting these events on and, you know, we, we're not in this to, to try to make a ton of money right out of the gate. It's obviously going to take some time to build our brand up to where people know what these things are. And, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we want flow to be happy, our partners, um, you know, we want, uh, to be putting on great shows, you know, that's, that's the key to it is, you know, making sure that, you know, so people are watching it when we're not close to them, but when we come, they want to see it, they want to come out they know that we're going to be done at nine 30. We, they know the show's quick, you know, so there's just, there's an importance on each time we have one that, that it is efficient. It looks good. 
and it's exciting racing. And so we have lots of ideas how to make that happen. Um, you know, I'm a promoter, so I understand there's going to be some duds and there's going to be some ones that, that are winners and, you know, uh, Puttonville went pretty good for the first one. Um, Wayne County had a great feel to it. So I think people are starting to understand who we are, what we are and what we're all about. Uh, but yeah, middle of the week, I think you, you definitely have to think about it. It's not, it's not going to be easy. You have to be in places that, you know, the sprint car crowds, you know, has a sprint car audience. And, and that's what we're looking at is, uh, trying to find those places and, you know, certainly have a lot of interest from racetracks. Um, you know, that doesn't seem to be the issue at all, um, is, is finding places. So, you know, it's more of just trying to find out logistically where they fit in, you know, in what part of the year, um, you know, so that we, we make sure that we you know, do have good crowds. Do you have, I feel like the schedule is an interesting thing, right? So, you know, you do 12 races. Is this a nationwide series? Like, are we going to see races in Pennsylvania and races in California, or are you going to try to stick to a tighter kind of geographic area? Yeah, a tighter geographic area for sure. Um, you know, we, we won't go, we won't go too far West of Iowa, you know, uh, so there, there will not be a high limit race at Chico next year. No. no. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, we have a point fund of $120,000 and we have some ideas how to make that exciting. But, you know, if you travel too far, I think it eliminates, you know, an opportunity for, you know, a smaller team to commit to those 12 races. And, and we want some, some smaller teams to, to feel like they have a chance at that point fund money. Um, you know, and you're going to have to run all 12 races to be eligible for that point fund money. So, you know, we do want uh, a team from Iowa you know, to, to try to be a high limit champion. And we want a team from Pennsylvania to try to be a high limit champion and, you know, so forth and, and whatnot. So we don't want to have to eliminate, you know, go too far West to where teams are like, man, we just, that's too expensive to go, you know, out there. We want to keep kind of the, the interest level high and, you know um, you know, like once again, go to places that we know are going to get good crowds and, and good places that, you know, we know for a fact it can produce good racing. Do you have thoughts on, on format? Like I, I know the first Lincoln park show was very much kind of an outlaw format situation. Are you going to kind of stick to that model for next year? I think we we'd like to, um, we have some other exciting things that we, we might implement, but, um, you know, we're kind of liquid on the situation, so to speak. Um, you know, I like the idea of, of keeping it all about racing and that's the easiest way to keep it all about racing to me is, you know, once you're done with time trials, the, the times are thrown out the window and then you line up heats and everything's from that point forward is racing. You pass cars, you're going forward. You know, you lose positions, you're going backwards. I don't like having to revert back to time personally, but, you know, I think we, we will be open, you know, looking at it, you know, we want this thing to be compelling. We want fans to be excited about watching a high limit race. So, you know, if we feel like there needs to be a tweak here or there, you know, it's not off the table. Uh, do you have like, a, a, you know, the kind of logistical things worked out? Do you have people in place? Do you have series director, do you have officials? Like, have you got all of that stuff worked out yet? Or are you still trying to put all that together? Uh, we, we don't have everything ironed out. Um, you know, at Wayne County, we had a kind of a different business model than what we had at Lincoln Park. And that was kind of what we were trying out is, you know, how, you know, how that was going to look. Um, you know, at Lincoln Park, we used an already existing series as infrastructure and, and just paid them a flat fee and they came in and and ran the event at Wayne County we brought our own director of competition in and a few officials uh and so we were going to try it that way so you know we we feel good about both ways um just you know at the end of the year Kyle and I and, and JP you know we have a we have a lot of interest from a lot of different officials and you know even as far as race teams making more money this is an opportunity for you know officials and announcers and you know, other people, cause we're not interfering with any other series, you know, so we have a lot of interest from, you know, other series officials, we have scorekeepers, we have announcers that want to be a part of this where it wouldn't affect their, their standard job. So, you know, I just think we're going to work through that. I don't think that's a, an issue of, you know, it's just basically who we decide to, to put in those places. Um, how is this, how are you balancing all of this, right? Like you, you have, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to drive the race car. You're trying to run Chico. You know, you talked about Kane screen print, you know, do you have enough time to like try to get all of this done during the course of a week? Man, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. Um, you know, I, I think that's what probably people don't realize about me is that, 
you know, I don't plan on racing forever. Um, you know, I don't plan on, you know, being out grinding it out for, for probably that much longer, to be honest. Um, you know, I feel like, um, but as a race car driver, you can't just quit cold Turkey and not have anything going. So this to me is kind of, uh, an opportunity to learn what else is out there. It's helping me learn about business, uh, the business side of racing and, you know, um, so, you know, yes, right now I'm, I'm excited about this stuff because, you know, this helps me know, you know, you know, when the next chapter will start as far as, you know, what, what can this look like financially, uh, you know, as far as cane screen print, silver dollar speedway, uh, you know, now this series, and then, you know, obviously, you know, want to make sure I'm giving 110% for my race team as well which, you know, I think once I get to the races and the, and I'm in the race car, you know, it's just, it's just a second nature to me at this point. I just get in and drive, you know, um, I probably do just about better sometimes when I'm promoting just because, uh, my mind's, you know, I don't overthink anything. You just get in and do it. You know, I won like the plastical race that I was promoting and, um, you know, Chico has been a challenge, but we have good, I have a good partner with Colby and then my wife runs, you know, a ton of that stuff. And, you know, I, I enjoy it. You know, I do the beer orders and help my wife with the food orders. And, you know, I come up with the payouts and me and Colby go over the, the run of schedule. And, you know, my wife might need help with this or that. I might answer the phone sometimes for Silver Dollar Speedway. And, you, you know, you do have some downtime when you're when you're not in the race car. It's, you know, we do we do have time to do other things. And, um, you know, so when I'm not in the car, I'm, I'm focused on looking at this high limit stuff working on my silver dollar stuff and you know Kane screen prints kind of at the at the Casey Kane racing shop so we have so many good people in place there that you know that thing just kind of does uh does what it does and they do a great job they're amazing uh, how many shirts they're able to produce and you know the artists are putting out great artwork and uh Kevin Hamlin and you know just everyone there uh Jen Adams they just do a great job so you know I'm a little I'm pretty hands off with that to be honest at this point and and more just you know focus on driving the car and and uh when I'm home, I help with Silver Dollar Speedway and, and trying to learn that business. And then, you know, now this this whole high limit thing is kind of a new new venture. Um, I, I want you to have an opportunity, you know, airing of grievances. If there's anything I've said that you didn't like that you think is incorrect, feel free to correct it at this moment. Yeah, no, no, I don't have any grievances. I think everyone's entitled to opinions, uh, you know, across whether they have a platform or not, or they want to tweet at us or, you know, maybe they're you know, unhappy with, you know, what we're doing. But like I said, you know, probably multiple times in this thing, I just, I really wanted to just, you know, let people know that I love the world of outlaws. I'm not trying to hurt them. And I, you know, I feel like adding 12 midweek races in the ecosystem, you know, won't hurt anybody. Um, you know, I kind of use uh, Oscar Luce as a good example. I don't think that hurts the Knoxville Nationals. If anything, I think it helps it. I think the Tuesday night Brad Doty classic, you know, is an add on for the Kings Royal. I don't think it hurts the Kings Royal. I don't think some of these mid week races, whether they go before some other big events or not, uh, I don't think they hurt anything. I think fans are always going to go to the big events and, you know, there's a certain amount of fans that, that want to see something a little bit more. So, you know, I hope uh, everyone can understand, you know, where this comes from. Uh, I hope the drivers and teams are excited about it. I hope the fans are excited about it. I think, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun next year, you know, putting these shows on and, and, you know, excited to battle it out. I'm excited to, you know, see some, some winners win some big money and, you know, hopefully, you know, next year's earnings, when we look at it compared to the late models, they'll be much closer. Um, I, I'll let you go here pretty quick. I, I want to ask this question and I am fully prepared for you to not answer it. Um, but I think it would personally be like super like a bummer if you were not racing for the world of Alice championship next year. Like, I feel like this is peak Brad sweet right now. You know, the, the fact that you've had the season you've had and, and, and are, you know, set to win championship number four, I mean, knock on wood here. Um, are you prepared to not run for this championship next year? And again, if you don't want to answer, don't answer, but I want to ask the question. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm with you. I, I want to run for the world of outlaw championship. Absolutely. Um, you know, but like I said, kind of earlier that there's a lot of moving parts and, you know, once I have all the information in front of me, I think it'll be a lot easier to make that decision, you know? So, you know, at this point, uh, I'm hopeful. 
Okay. Uh, Brad Sweet, thank you for the time today. And, and I, I want it clear to you reached out to me to have this conversation. I did not reach out to you, which I think is super great that you want to get out and talk about this stuff. Uh, so I just want to say that I appreciate you reaching out to me to do this because uh, you, you didn't have to do that. You're a busy guy like we've talked about. Um, so I appreciate that. I want you to know that that I appreciate that. But um, good luck with this stuff going forward. Uh, you know, we will obviously all be watching uh, with bated breath how all of this stuff goes on and, and uh, good luck the rest of the way with the, uh, with the World of Alice Championship, Chase. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Great questions and, you know, good, good debate. You know, I, I appreciate, you know, the, the opportunity to, you know, kind of let people know uh, where we stand and, and what we're all about and, you know, uh, hoping for the best for everybody in sprint car racing.